Hi. In this data analysis, I'm going to do a quick run through kind of a realistic, fairly realistic analysis of a data set that I found on the web about some building permits. It's a little bit unauthentic because I've worked through it a couple of times just to make sure I can show you some interesting things, but basically you're going to see everything I'm doing as I work through this data analysis. So I'm just going to start off, I'm going to work in an R Markdown document, and I'm going to start off with a title, and I'm going to start by loading the Tidyverse, which is the suite of R packages that we're going to use to do all the data analysis. Okay, now the first thing you always have to do in a data analysis is load the data. I have this loaded here already, uh, copied already, uh, and this came from um, Texas A&M's Real Estate Real Research Center, so I'm going to load that. And as I as I kind of work through this analysis, I'm going to write code, but I'm also going to write some text that's going to remind me where these things have come from. So I'm going to load this in, and I'm going to call this permits raw, and this is a CSV file. So I'm going to load that in, and then I'm just going to print it to make sure see what's going on. So when we read this in, our uh, reader, the package that powers this, is going to tell us all of the column types, and then I just printed it out just to see what's going on. Now the first thing I need to fix here is this null value. So in R, um, we use NA for missing value. So I'm going to have to tell read CSV what to do. So let's just rerun that and reprint it out. And now you can see we've got the specially formatted NA, which is short for not applicable or um, Missing. Okay, and just to quickly explain the data, the area is a metropolitan standard area, which is how the census divides up the country into big cities. We've got the date, which is month slash year. Now that's currently stored as a character vector or strings, which is going to make it hard to plot, so we'll fix that shortly. Then we've got F1. That's um, one family house. We've got F24, that's a house with two to four families in it. And we've got also, if we scroll across, F5, which is a five plus family house. And then we have the units, which is just number of, number of buildings. We have the change in units, then we've got the value, which is the average value of building, and then the value change, which is just the change in the value. So what I'm going to do, also you'll see the data goes back quite a long time, so I'm just going to start off by um, looking at the last 10 years of data, so I'm going to start with I'm going to create a new data frame called permits. And I'm going to say, I just want, oops, well, if I want to filter by year, I really need a year variable first. So I'm going to use this function called separate, which is going to split date into month and year. How do I want to split it up? I want to split it breaking up on this slash character. And then because month and year are actually integers, I'm going to ask, um, separate to split them up. And we get an error because I made a spelling mistake. I think this was permits raw. Rerun that code and rerun this and see what happens. So we get month and year. That looks good. And now I just want the last 10 years of data. So I'm going to say the year should be greater than 2007. And the one other thing I'm going to do here is I'm, there's a bunch of these change variables. I don't generally, I think generally it's a bad idea to kind of like distrust any computation that someone else has done. It's not, maybe they've done it correctly, but you always want to verify that. And we can do that pretty easily ourselves. So I'm just going to get rid of all of the variables that end with change. Okay, so now we've got about 40,000, 44,000 rows and about nine columns. Okay, so now that I've got a couple of data in sort of a very, very basic 
shape. I'm going to do some very basic EDA just to get a sense of like what's going on with this data set. And a really useful tool for that is just a count. So I'm going to say count by year. And again, it's pretty common in a data analysis. I've forgotten to assign that to a variable. So you can see we've got about 45,000 records per year, maybe a little less than 2015, 2016, 2017. I could also break it down by area. And you can see most of them have 119 observations. Now I'm going to use a pretty uh, useful little trick here. I'm going to do a double count. I'm going to say now count how many had a, that count of area. So you can see that there was one area that had 47 records, 16 areas that had 84, and 364 that had all 119 records. So it's just useful to give me a little idea of what's going on. Now for this analysis, I'm just gonna focus on single family homes. And I think it's a good idea just to start with a quick visualization of that. So I'm going to kind of construct my x, I want a time series, so I want time on the x-axis. Uh, we don't really have a great, actually let's, let's make, let's fix that now. I need a new variable, I'm going to recreate date just very quickly and dirtily. I'm going to take month minus one and divide it by 12 and add that onto year. So that's going to be January will be, January of 2007 will be 2007, and then February will be 2007 plus a little bit. So I want date on the x-axis, I want to put the number of single family dwellings on the y-axis, and it's always a good idea just to start out with points. And I get an error because I didn't spell the name correctly. So let's turn this into a plot, which is not very useful because most of the data is just in this big black blob down the bottom. So let's turn this into lines which is also not very useful because we just get one line. I need to tell it how to break it up into lines. I need to tell it how it's grouped and is grouped. There we go. So this helps a little bit. We can see a few of the bigger cities, but most of the data is just this big black blob down here at the bottom again. So let's just kind of, let's just weed things down a bit. So let's focus on a smaller subset. And I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily, like, let's focus on big, big cities. Now, it's possible that this is going to bias our results, bias our results because maybe big, big cities are different to small cities in some way. But even, even taking that into account, I think it's a good place to start with the places you've got the most data. And if this is a real data analysis, you'd later come on and extend those same ideas and look at all of the cities, not just the big ones. But so let's start by figuring out well, which are the big cities. So we want to summarize permits. I want to group it by area. And then I'm just going to compute the average number of single family dwellings built each month. And I want to see the ones that are the biggest. So I'll arrange that in descending order. So Houston's right there at the top. So 2,500 new building permits for single dwelling homes every month. Then Dallas, Atlanta, Phoenix, Washington, Austin, and so on. And I'm going to arbitrarily, I want to let's save this to a variable, F1 units. And then I'm going to kind of say arbitrarily, I'm just going to look at all of the how all of the cities that have uh, a greater than a hundred every month. And that gives us about a hundred rows. So this is, a, sorry, this gives us a hundred cities. And then now we need to go back and find all the permits for those cities. And I'm going to do that with a semi-join. This basically is just going to say, give me all of this permits data that matches these cities that I've picked out. And let's just print that out again. So I'm just going through all of these functions really, really quickly. You're not going to know what most of them does, but that 
do, but that's fine. You'll learn out and you'll learn what they do over the course of the semester. For, for now, kind of focus on this process. I try out something, I look at the result and then see how that's going. So I've now got 11,000 rows and let's go up and uh, redo this plot. So now instead of just the perm, all of the permanence data, I'm just going to look at the permanence data for the bigger cities. And that makes things a little better, right? We've kind of got rid of a bunch of these little cities down the bottom. It's still pretty hard to see what's going on. One quick trick I can do is make the lines transparent. I can add some alpha transparency. Makes things a little better. Now we can't really see the big cities, but we can see what's going on with smaller cities. And of course, I should be using the big here. It's big. Helps a little bit. Another thing that's sometimes helpful is maybe I could try doing a log 10 transformation. A log transformation is often useful when you've got data that spans like multiple orders of magnitude. You know, we've got these really big cities like Houston as well as much, much smaller cities. So let's try that. And that, that's actually quite, that seems to do quite a good job of kind of shrinking the bigger cities down and expanding the smaller cities up. And now it looks like we can actually see that, you know, maybe there's some kind of like common pattern going on within a year. And then maybe there's some sort of common long-term trends. Well, one easy way to make those long-term trends a little easier to see is to add on a smooth line. Let's do that. Let's see what happens. So that's kind of interesting. We can start to see maybe that there's some sort of long-term structural things that are affecting many cities. But it's still a little hard to see because we've got these two problems, that we've got this strong pattern within the year and the cities are still kind of spread out. Like, can we, can we do better? And to do that, let's, let's, we're going to use a model. Because models are really powerful tools for partitioning the signal. So we're going to try and partition this, this pattern, the signal, into this monthly component and then what, what's left, maybe this a smoother long term trend. And it's going to be easiest to do that if I start by focusing on just one city. So I'm going to find the city, and I can't remember exactly what the name of Houston, some standard metropolitan standard area is, and it's quite long. So I'm going to use a, a little string, a regular expression function, just to look for all of the areas that contain the word Houston. And I just want to check that worked. So that looks good. I've got 119 records about Houston, the Woodlands, and Sugarland. And now I'm going to redraw that plot again, just with this one city. So now with this one city, you can see it looks like this pretty strong seasonal trend. We could maybe pull that out even more by putting month on the x-axis and drawing a separate line for each year. And then since we found the log 10 scale useful before, let's try it again here. Yeah. And so I think there's, there's some sort of evidence of a strong seasonal pattern here, right? You can see there's more building permits in kind of earlier in the year than in winter. And so I'm just going to kind of, you know, this, this raises a whole bunch of questions in my head and I'll just jot them down. I'm not going to fix solve them right now, but, um, you know, is this pattern the same everywhere? What drives it? Is it the weather? Maybe it's the weather because fewer houses are built in winter, but like, why is that? Because like Houston in July is less pleasant. In Houston in December. So it's a little weird to see this pattern in Houston where if anything the weather's actually nicer in winter than it is in summer. Okay, but let's let's try and extract that pattern out. We're gonna do this by using a linear model. And we're gonna use a in this class we use a little package called model R which helps us out with a few things. So I'm gonna create a model. Of Houston and basically what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and predict the number of units based on just the month and I'm going to treat that month rather than a continuous value but as a categorical variable. 
Now this, I don't believe this model is a good model, right? I know there's other stuff going on here. I'm just using it as a way to kind of partition the signal into this monthly effect and what's less. So first of all, I can look at what, what, what does this model capture? So I'm gonna use this add predictions function that's gonna add a column of predictions to my data frame. It's all called add predictions. And if we scroll across, you'll see this now new column called pred. And I'm gonna plot this. I'm gonna plot the date on the x-axis, the predicted values on the y-axis, and then draw that with a line. And so you can see what this model has captured is just this repeating seasonal pattern. What might be more interesting is to look at the undo loop. What might be more useful is to look at the residuals from the model. So rather than that monthly signal, what, rem what remains after we remove that monthly signal? So I'm going to use exactly the same code, but instead of adding predictions, I'm going to add residuals, and then that variable is called resid. Now this is, I think, quite interesting and quite useful because now that we've removed that really strong monthly pattern, we can kind of see the longer term clear trends much more clearly. We can see there's this big jump around 2010 and a steady increase and then maybe a slight decrease. So we could certainly think more about that, like, you know, what's driving this trend, what happened around 2010, lots of good questions that we could continue on with. But what I'm going to do next is make the extend the model to every city. And to do this, I'm going to start off with a couple of bits of code. I'm just going to copy and paste in. So here, I'm first of all going to create a new data frame where I've nested the data. So basically what I'm going to do, I have a data frame where I've got one row for each city, and then inside that data frame, I've got the data for each individual city. This is just kind of a useful data structure for um, the data that we're working with. I'm going to wrap my model up into a function because that's going to make it easier to apply and then I'm going to do some tricks with um, Tate and with some functions for the per package. These, these, the, the, these are kind of things, these are tools map and map to and these group data are tools that allow you to kind of quickly generalize once you've done it for one area how do you do it for all of the areas. And I'm just going to kind of skim over that for now. we will learn all about that in detail in due course. But you can now see for every all of these cities, I've got this residual. What's the difference from the, the, the monthly? And then I'm just going to go up here. I'm going to find my original plotting code. And now instead of plotting F1 units, I'm going to spot the residuals from my model. Work because I also forgot to change the data frame. We get a few errors, which makes me. I'm just going to make this quick hack here and see if that fixes it. Something weird is going on there. This, um, that's the, and the problem was I had added that log, I just copied and pasted that code from previously where I'd added that log Y scale. I didn't actually need that here because I incorporated that log transformation into my model. So again, I'm just brushing over all of these really important details, but you can see basically what we've got now is this plot that it's much, it's much, much easier to see the long-term trend now that we've removed those short-term. So let's just kind of quickly recap what we do in this data analysis. Well, we started off by loading the tinyverse. That's the suite of pack R packages we're going, to, we're going to use a lot in this class. Then we read in the data. 
We did a little bit of kind of tidying of the data, making sure that we've got useful variables like splitting that date variable up into month and year, getting one of those variables we're not interested in. Then we did some super quick EDA just to get a quick idea of what's going on in this data set, just counting. Counting is like a super duper useful technique, you use it all the time. And then we dived into a visualization. And then pretty much the rest of the analysis was like motivated by this one visualization. How can we take this one visualization and make it useful? Make it more useful. And we, we made it more useful by first kind of narrow focusing in on just the bigger cities. Again, now that you've kind of done this for the big cities, you probably want to look at the smaller cities. And then that, that got us to here. We did some manipulations of the plot. We added a log scale, we added a smooth curve, that helped a lot. But at some point we kind of have to move away from just visualization and think about, well, could we use a model? Could we kind of partition this pattern into this short-term monthly variation and a longer-term smoother trend? We did that first with Houston. Great problem-solving strategy. If you've got a big complicated problem to solve, just start with one small piece, solve it, and then generalize your solution to all of the cities. And then that ends up with this final plot, which I think is quite interesting because it tells us like, hey, there does seem to be some pattern that's affecting all of these metropolitan standard areas. You can see that there, there's, there's some decrease. There was that, that, what, that, that uptick in 2010 it wasn't just Houston. It was everywhere or most places. It dropped down and then it's gradually been increasing over. Of course, this plot raises a whole bunch of other questions. You can see some cities that did not do seem to be dropping off again. You might wonder, well, what's different about those cities? Like, why, what's, can we explain more of this variation in here? And so again, all great stepping off points for the next part of your data.